Well, thank you everyone for joining right on the dot here. Really appreciate you coming and having fun with us. Uh, this is our last webinar of the year and it's a momentous occasion. It's a pleasure for me to host for the very first time. Um, I'd want to recognize the talent in the room today, not just our speakers, but the attendees. Um, I know we all work together to some extent. And so I see some familiar faces. I see some new ones and it, regardless, we hope to see you at ProMat in Chicago next year, 2025, and looking to work with you. So to jump right in, uh, today we're going to be talking about a solution, particularly uh, something that we can use in the manufacturing industry. So that can change how some are choosing to automate their warehouses. And it's a solution uh, that is automated storage and retrieval systems. On deck with us today is one of our senior application engineers, Kevin, who has been with Daifuku Interlogistics since our WinRide days. So he's been with us for eight years and he's really risen to become a young leader in his own right. And Kevin, you're out of the Cincinnati Noki area. We also have one of our account managers, Christopher Halkett, who has been deeply entrenched in the material handling world for just about that long, 10 years. And Chris has an incredible background from a technical aspect as well, commissioning these and truly living the whole life cycle. So Chris is out of Little Rock. My name is Kim. A great portion of my background stems from my time here previously as a controls engineer with a focus in robotic integration. And since then, I've returned to Daifuku Intralogistics as the newest account executive and your host today. I'm out of the West Coast. So to give everyone a good sense of pace, we're going to run through what an automated storage and retrieval system is, where it can help with manufacturing. We're going to cover some real life use cases and definitely come prepared for Q&A afterwards. Uh, and, and just looking around, we've got a mixed audience. I know some may have a deep knowledge on this topic. Some may not have worked with it at all. So what are we looking at here? Uh, what is it and where do you normally see it implemented? Um, this is a massive storage space, um, and it is a product that we at Daifuku may be the most well known for. It's aisles and aisles of automation that make up ASRS abbreviated. So how does it work? Uh, there's dedicated locations that store items in totes or pallets that can be tracked and retrieved accurately. Um, so this is really known for being a solution of high speed, high intensity and minimal maintenance. Uh, so depending on what you wanna solve for, it may be your next solution. So if you can imagine transitioning from manual racking to something more automated comes with its advantages. So uh, Chris, to start us off, can you get, can you start us with one you can think of? Sure can, thanks Kim. So just like you said, um, within a lot of warehouse spaces today, we see manual racking. Um, across uh, every industry, we see kind of similar processes, things like receiving, decanting, kitting, manufacturing itself, uh, storage of finished goods and shipping. And what an ASRS really looks to do in this case is to optimize the productivity and allow you to reallocate resources from low value tasks to high value tasks, right? So things such as picking and placing are done automatically. So you can have those resources be utilized in processes like manufacturing and kitting and decanting and things like that. Uh, it also offers great ergonomic benefits for the workers. They're not having to work at heights, reach into racking, risk injuring themselves. There's uh, decreased workers' compensation claims, uh, which is a huge cost-saving benefit. It also helps to uh, implement simplified decision-making. So most resources or headcount across the warehouse has to have an understanding of the full schema of where everything is in the warehouse at any given time. And what the ASRS allows us to do is automatically understand and know exactly where everything is bringing the right product to the worker at the right time. And that's getting in a little bit more accuracy. So I'm gonna pass this over to Kim now. So Thanks. Kim, take it away. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, when teams look to transition to this solution, you've got a couple things to consider, including accuracy. So think about it. When you're manually storing 
items, you run the risk of misplaced items and mispicks. Um, there's such a greater reduction of that when it's automated. Um, you're going to have your warehouse execution software alongside your WMS allow for inventory tracking to be up to date and accurate. So that's awesome. Um, there's also a improved quality control over if you were going to manually place that yourself. So you're looking at enhanced traceability within the operation. If you're thinking lock codes or expiration dates, all of that is tracked um, accurately as well. So I think about a time when we worked with a client in the medical industry, it was a nonprofit enterprise, an academic reference lab, uh, part of a university. So if you can imagine that is, there's unique challenges that come with that, um, especially for a team. So our team was tasked with tackling that and designed and implemented a system that automatically transported and sorted 25,000 new specimens per day. So that is test tubes, individual test tubes. You're going to want traceability for that. And 80% of that movement was returns to be stored for additional tests. So that's bringing their daily volume up to 45,000. Um, it The results were incredible. It was a return on investment in only four years. So highly significant improvements in quality and efficiency through automation. Um, and specifically to that client and that design, the track had a capacity of 7,000 new tubes per hour. So a retrieval time of any single tube of 2.5 minutes. But more importantly, again, that automated tracking allowed for this particular client to increase quality and traceability, which I've brought up earlier. So I haven't even touched on the amount of storage in the setting, uh, but I think I know Chris can cover that. <laughs> Absolutely, Kim. So within manufacturing, there is so much to store, right? You have raw goods, potentially pre-made kits, uh, your finished goods storage. And in a manual warehouse, let's uh, talk about you know, pallets, right? If you have a load envelope of 48 by 40 with counterbalance forks, you're looking at a space of anywhere from 10 to 12 feet to have a safe turn radius for them to be able to pick that pallet out of the racking. With an ASRS, it allows you to reduce that footprint to five feet across, right? So there's across three aisles, already an additional three bays available. So if you go vertical, you're capped at in manual about 45 feet usually. Uh, within an ASRS, if we do rack supported, we can go up to 140 feet. Now, storage density isn't the only storage benefit here though. With ASRS, we can also store based on your Pareto, which means we can view your raw goods, recognize your A movers, your B, C, D, and E movers, and we can sequence them in the warehouse so your A movers are at the front of the aisle and they're readily available right when you need them. We can also look at things with the WES that allow us to see raw goods that are utilized together frequently. What we can do is we can compartmentalize those within totes, right? So that allows them to be ready together at the same time, which is great for batch picking. Um, we can also do finished goods sequencing within the racking. So that way we can bring it out by truck stop, by weight, however you prefer. Um, and just because the ASRS isn't being used for picking doesn't mean it still can't be used. Uh, ASRSs are great at shuffling for optimization and downtime. So if you have forecasting available, it's uh, super beneficial there. And all of this has benefits for throughput, which I'm now gonna pass back to Kim. Appreciate that, exactly. Uh, depending on the variables you account for in design, it's possible to amount, uh, reduce the amount of rework required in that process that gets replaced, uh, which increases that throughput. And then it obviously optimizes space therein, reducing the time for search and retrieval. And then also that software um, now automatically buffers and forecasts, optimizing the time used. So that will, reduce bottleneck elimination delays when you're manually handling that. Um, and again, I think of another case study where we were working with a major ice cream brand. Um, they produce well over 250 frozen desserts from Froyo to ice cream, Sherbert, all that. And specifically with ice cream, timing and reliability is crucial. So this is, again, a great application for cold storage and automation. Our team was tasked with implementing automated storage. So 
to increase that productivity and throughput. And that was designed and implemented for this client to deliver products either to a freezer to store or directly to ship. Um, and what's really cool is we maintain that strong partnership today. So at nearly 8,000 locations at, for that specific project, 100% of that storage space was used. Uh, we doubled their capacity at that time. Um, and specifically for that one, we dealt with two different pallet types, GMA and four-way pallet. Um, so that enhanced their capability to take it directly from production to receiving. Um, and another thing that I find really cool is that other plants ship to that location to store, uh, which is awesome. I know we've covered a lot of benefits already, but um, and some real use, real case studies. But Kevin, if you could tell us a little bit more about what we do in the manufacturing location, like that's awesome. Sure thing, Kim. Thanks. So what we'd want to tie together here um, on the previous slides, what we talked about were several different benefits of implementing ASRS as part of your operation from going from a, a manual setting to uh, an automated operation. And a lot of people, when they do the ROI justifications for that, will focus on productivity savings. And that is kind of the first and foremost area of where you should start with. What we would encourage that people keep in mind when they go through those considerations is the productivity, while that's a big part and a big benefit, all of those other things that Chris and Kim mentioned, square foot savings um, and warehousing space, um, the storage density that you can get going vertical and horizontal, um, increases in accuracy and reduction in errors that occur, um, improvements to ergonomics and better safety in the warehouse, reduced workers' comp claims. All of those other advantages also have dollar figures associated with them. So uh, oftentimes the, the extra benefits that you see from all those other things besides productivity uh, also help tip the scale uh, in favor of embracing automation. So it's just something that we would encourage our customers to think about. What we have showed here on the slide is a example case study of a manufacturing client that we're working with in the Midwest. So they came to us with some of the pain points that were mentioned in the previous slides of uh, they were bursting at the seams as far as their ability to store all of their pallets in the warehouse. And it wasn't the, the most productive way to pick everything with the way that they were working. So when we started working with them, the proposed solution here, which was a nine aisle double deep uh, unit load ASRS system, it more than doubled the amount of pallets uh, of storage that they were able to get in their warehouse. So in their current operation with all of their pallets, they filled up the amount of storage that they had available in the building and they were actually uh, leasing a temporary warehouse close by to account for the additional storage needs that they had at the time. So with our system, when it is going live, it's enabling them to close that temporary facility and consolidate several buildings um, in their facility into one area of storage that has everything as far as the pallet storage is concerned. So it went from eight or 9,000 pallets on site up to just shy of 20,000 pallets uh, encased in that nine aisle system. And that building actually has room for an additional three aisles of storage to be added for a future project if they realize their uh, growth potential on the design year that they were intending. In addition to all of the storage benefits, the way that they were operating before is they had man up order pickers going on uh, extended pick routes throughout the building. So they would have a, a centralized start and drop point. They would have to travel with the vehicle into this other building. They would have two or three aisles that they were assigned to pick pallets from um, or parts off of a pallet and then return them to that pick up and drop off point. With our system, the cranes would take the pallets out of the aisles of storage and then return them over to a centralized picking area with our STV loop. So that centralized picking area, instead of having to do lengthy vehicle trips or go 20 or 30 feet up and reach for products inside of a rack uh, while you're attached to your vehicle. Those pallets are delivered to the operators that are just standing on a short platform. Those pallets are right at chest height, so it's very ergonomic, very safe for them to pick. And then once they take those products and put it on order pallets, the order pallets actually have an ergonomic lift 
that raises and lowers that uh, order pallet position so that as they fill it up, they can continue to adjust the height to make it you know easy and safe for them to work on as well. So two major benefits that they were able to, to realize with this system. Um, another thing that we'd point out with this one is that it's a brownfield project. So um, a lot of ASRS sites, either freestanding or rack supported are greenfield just due to the flexibility that, that you have with that. Uh, but we are also able to do brownfield projects, which uh, this customer is a good example of. Um, they were very paramount that they would need to stay operational during this project. So we've uh, been in process of installing it in uh, installing it, excuse me, in two phases where half of the aisles of rack are being installed on day one. And then the system is going live that they switch from their manual to the automated operation. And then after reaching that go live stage, we're extending the aisles so that they get the second half worth of positions that they have towards the rear of the building. And then once that process is complete, they'll have the full 19 to 20,000 pallet locations. And then all of this is being tied together with our software so that they can consolidate orders from all of the parts that come out of the ASRS and go to um, their shipping. And if they have any other parts that come from like a small shelving area, those are being consolidated with our software. In addition to uh, pallet ASRS, we also offer the ability to convey uh, totes and uh, cartons. So that is accomplished with our mini load ASRS or shuttle technologies. Uh, this case study is for our own manufacturing. Uh, it's a Daifuku center in Shiga, Japan, utilizing our uh, mini load ASRS technology, uh, which is shown here in the middle of the screen, as well as uh, picking stations adjacent to that for kitting and assembly. So similar to the previous example, this helps their business because instead of having to take those lengthy vehicle trips or walk all over the warehouse looking for kitting parts that are stored you know, in any number of places in the previous operation, that storage is now all centralized in one location with that mini load. So we know where everything is. The picking is not a um, you know, disorganized, go look for the parts, pick whatever is part of that kit. The software directs it so that everything that comes out of the mini load and is delivered to those picking stations, it tells them exactly what to pick, whether it's everything in that tote or just a, a partial amount of those units. And then if that's the case, it tracks the remaining units that goes back in the tote into those mini load aisles so that all times we have an accurate understanding of what's being stored. And then it just overall improves the efficiency by allowing the operators to stay in their area, have the parts delivered right to them tell them what to pick, they put it into a tote, it goes outbound for shipping or the next stage in the manufacturing process, and then the totes can go back into the uh, mini load for any residual pro uh, product. And then the next slide here is just a 3D image of the same operation just to give uh, an idea of what this looks like. So it's generally small scale compared to you know all of the storage that would be required uh, in those four aisles of mini load if it were to be shorter or shelving or carton flow or anything like that uh, which is typically the the manual versions of what we see uh, when switched to a mini load storage operation and you could see with the conveyor going in and out here that the picking in the in and out of the system all occurs right there at the front of the aisle in a, a small isolated space um, so overall just a lot of storage and space savings um, as benefits of this system so with those two case studies, we'd like to uh, conclude our uh, presented content and uh, open it up to the audience for any questions. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Absolutely. If anyone wants to hop in with a question, oh, we've got some Q&A right here, actually. Um, Oh yeah, please ask your questions in this location. We've got 30 people on the call. We can also generally answer some common questions. Um, but Josh, if you'd like to pipe, pipe up. Um, LJ, thank you for joining. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces. I think what is a common question that most people will ask, particularly um, some people are like, how do you deal with 
how do you approach the height of a building when you're dealing with storage like this? So, Kim, as far as uh, height goes in ASRS, um, we are capable, as uh, Chris said, of installing crane heights up to 40 meters in a rack supported setting. Um, the the max rated load of our weight is up to uh, 3,000 kilograms for our standard cranes. Um, the height can vary depending on how heavy of a load is being stored, but for standard loads up to about 3,000 pounds, we can go up to that 40 meters of height. There are limitations um, as far as that goes, as far as the, the throughput of the aisle. And really, when any customer comes to us with a consideration of, hey, we want to store you know, a high volume uh, pallet building, it's usually a balance of how tall the system goes and the storage density that can be achieved with that, uh, with the throughput demands that they have for going in and out of the system. And we, we typically look at that as being a balance of those two factors when we consider a design. So it definitely depends, of course. <laughs> so, I've got like one from Sabir, absolutely. And Sabir is someone that has been, I've worked with closely um, and currently at Rivian. Uh, his question is, hi, can these ASRS systems reliably handle and store large scale machinery? And I think Christopher, you might have a great yeah. answer to that. Yeah, so <clears throat> we uh, we absolutely can store large scale machinery. Uh, we have a great example of a company where we stored full truck bodies, um, which I think is one of the larger ones that we've done here in the US. Um, it really, when it comes to machinery, it's going to be probably more about the weight um, than the size, because I know we've done, uh, I think, rolls of carpet as well that are 18 feet long. So the length isn't necessarily uh, the question. I think they're, I think they're 18 feet, maybe 12 feet. Um, but yeah, we can definitely handle uh, large scale machinery. It's just going to come down to the uh, the dimensions and the contours. Absolutely. Uh, what would be some of the toughest thing? How are we doing on time, Cecile? Um, I think we're yeah. we've got there's a couple a, minutes. Yeah, there's, but... there's another one, Kim. Oh, there's great! Yeah. Question. There's a couple ones. Awesome. Uh, we have. Can we use existing rack in the ASRS? Thank you, Malo and Mike. So. I Kevin, you want to take this one? Sure. So typically um, with pallet rack, if it's uh, installed in your building for, for a manual rack operation, that is usually not designed to interface with um, ASRS cranes. So typically the a new ASRS project will come with its own racking. Makes sense. Yep. And then... Looks like we have a WMS question as well. Go for it, yeah. So uh, Sierra, so Daifuku is not a WMS provider. We are a WES provider, meaning that we will offer the execution layer in between the WMS and the system. So we interface with all of the big WMS and ERP softwares, um, any communication protocol, uh, but we do not provide a WMS ourselves. We've got a question from Anil. Is this system? We got it. Is the system uh, the, need uh, specific pallet size? The pallet sizes can range and vary uh, significantly, and the design of the rack uh, typically is done to accommodate that range of sizes. There is a eventual limitation to the size that the cranes can handle, um, but their um, cranes can also handle multiple pallet sizes on the uh, same system. And something that I'll I'll add to that, Kevin, is just, just because it's not a dimension that we've worked with in the past doesn't mean it's not something that we wouldn't consider. We would just have to evaluate kind of what's feasible with the existing technology as it stands.
All right, we're rounding the top of the half hour here. Any last questions? Um, as you know, this will be recorded and put up on YouTube so you can see that um, in the future. And if also, if you have any other questions, you may email us and uh, we'll reach out. Oh, we've got one, perhaps. Oh, it's a thumbs up from Leonard. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you so much for joining you guys. Appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.